Hi everybody, um, they're going to start this video by showing you the end result of this tutorial. So this is a wooden tray and um, I have created a one-of-a-kind painting within the tray. It is resin art and I'm going to be taking you through the whole process and I've had a lot of feedback requesting to truly show the whole process, including the mixing of the resin. So if you don't want to see the mixing, please forward ahead to about 28 minutes into this video. So I want to start by showing you, and I'm unraveling um, some of the wrap that I put onto this. And I put a piece of tape across the diameter of the tray so that the, um, the wrap stayed above the resin. Because what I essentially did, and I'm showing you here, is I bought this tray and I applied a thin layer of resin to seal it before I created my painting. And I allowed that resin to cure. And when I did that, I used about five fluid ounces, I believe, of resin. And this tray has a diameter of 15 inches. As you can see, what I'm showing you there is, although it looks like one piece of wood, it isn't. It's created from various pieces of wood. So anywhere there's a gap, there is potential for resin to seep through. It never ceases to surprise me how resin finds that one little gap and moves through it. So resin ends up on the outside of the tray and you end up with air bubbles in the tray. So the other thing I want to mention and I'm showing you now is there's two handles that are incorporated into the wood and I have covered them with some masking tape. But when you uh, select your tray, if you decide to do this type of project, make sure you purchase a tray where the handle is not flush with the base, that there is a gap to take a painting. Um, because otherwise you'll have your pour your resin in and it are roll over into the handles and kind of ruin that look, that nice kind of clean cut look. So this tray I purchased in uh, in Home Goods. What I'm showing you there is an alternative. I'm showing you a pack of resin that you can buy from um, such places as Amazon or uh, Michaels, and it's a 16 fluid ounce pack. And uh, it might be an option if you are looking to do a one-off project. 16 fluid ounces will cover this tray. And I showed you my plastic cups that I use for um, mixing my colors. I showed you my popsicle sticks. And I'm also showing you my 3M mask. And that is the painter's mask that protects against vapors. Very important if you're using resin, especially if you are going to be um, using a blowtorch. And you do have to have a means to get heat onto this, this painting because it's the heat that dissipates any air bubbles that form in your resin and gives you that glass-like finish. So I'm going to put out my cups and I'm going to show you the quantities of the various additives I am going to add to resin. And for this second, second layer, which essentially is the painting, I'm going to use about 12 fluid ounces of resin. I believe you can do it with less. I'm inclined to be a bit liberal with my resin. Um, I want to create depth and I don't want to have any possibility of running out during the process. So I've already selected my colors. Um, I'm replicating a palette that I'd previously done on another video for a painting called Passion. Um, one of my favorite color palettes uh, of products and I'm going to be using those again today and the palette I'm going to talk you through each product and I'm going to show you how much I put in the cup and in each of these cups there will be between one and two fluid ounces of resin so my first two colors which I'm actually going to combine to make a very gold bright uh, red with a lot of um, attractive qualities to it is two golden fluid acrylics and first one is transparent red oxide 
And the second one that I'm combining with it is Cridacridone Nickel Azo Gold. I've put those two colors together. Um, I like it to be about 70% red iron oxide to the 25%, 25 to 30% Nickel Azo Gold. I, the combination of those two create what I believe is a beautiful red color. And I'm gonna be mixing that with two fluid ounces of resin um, because that's gonna be my signature color of this piece. So my signature color, usually when I make that selection, that is the last color that I put down on my piece because I want it to be dominant. So I'm mixing uh, two fluid ounces of clear resin into that cup. That resin looks a bit cloudy. It really isn't. Um, the video picked it up like that. It's actually quite clear. So as you can see, I put in about 10 drips of each of the two colors. So not very much at all. And I'm stirring. And as you can see, it's quite amazing how little you need especially with gold and fluid acrylics the pigment is um, very dense so I've mixed those uh, those paints into the resin and it's created a red with a gold um, shimmer about it uh, it's not really a metallic it but it definitely has some kind of color shift that shows that azo gold in there and I've just shown you again the red because I decided after I mixed it, I wanted the red to be just a little bit more vibrant. So I've just added two more drips to the cup and I'm re-stirring. It's very easy to mix uh, golden fluid acrylics into resin. They're very compatible. And that's going to give me this, the same color, but with just a little bit more um, ping to the red pigment. So the second product that I'm going to mix is the, now this is Tattoo Ink and it's Mum's Millennium. Tattoo Ink, if you've never used it, is compatible with resin. Um, and I'm gonna show you, I don't need very much. And this is gonna go into one fluid ounce of resin. Um, and I'm saying that approximately, but it is about one fluid ounce. So really very little. Um, and that's gonna to be totally sufficient. The Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink is, is favoured by the industry, by tattoo artists themselves. And I've purchased other brands and it's been very hit and miss as far as, um, not the compatibility, the compatibility seems to always be there, but the pigment cannot be um, as intense. And uh, But Mum's Millennium, I have quite a number of their colors now and um, I particularly like them and this one and I'll be sure in a second when we go to the second one but I believe this was the suede brown which is kind of a mid brown and I like that in combination with another brown mum's millennium yes this one uh, and the name of this one, they have some funky names, obviously, for their target audience, but consumer. But this one is called Doodoo Brown. I have to stop myself from laughing when I say that. Um, and it's a Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink. It's a deep brown. And that's going to be my second of two tattoo inks that I'm going to be using in this piece. And this produces a really kind of dark brown um, but what I found is these tattoo inks suspended in resin not only yield you a beautiful color but they uh, have created some interesting results in relation to being close to or overlapping with mica powder pigments essentially so you saw how much I put in there. Look, look very quickly. I am able to create a very rich, deep brown. So my next uh, item is a black diamond pigment powder. And that was medieval copper. Very beautiful, as you can see. And look how much I'm putting in. This is a regular popsicle stick, not the large ones. And that's sufficient, again, for, I'm going to put in there 
one, one and a half fluid ounces of uh, clear resin. So I just wanted to show you the idea of me showing you as I mix is you really don't, if you buy, if you buy reliable products and golden fluid acrylics, black diamond pigments, and the Mums Millennium, they're all reliable products and they're going to give you a great yield for very little quantity. So I'm just adding a little bit more clear resin because I wanted, I guess I found that I had shortchanged myself a little bit on the uh, medieval copper. So that's a black diamond pigment, pigment and I purchased those from Amazon. I'm going to use a second of two black diamond pigments and this one is called hazelnut, diamond hazelnut. And in the title for the color, it says diamond hazelnut, the emphasis on diamond. So any of their colors that have diamond in the title of the color have a diamond shimmer, as you can see, I'm showing you on the screen. And uh, that one is the hazelnut. And I really like that one, diamond hazelnut. And it really does seem to marry up very nicely to the medieval copper. So... Um, I often use both of those together. So I'm just stirring that one. So I'm hoping you'll find this helpful seeing the, um, the, you know, just how you mix resin, give you a kind of a step-by-step -step guide. Look how beautiful that color is. It really is absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, and as I said at the beginning, if you don't want to watch and you're kind of, this part is not applicable to what you need, Move forward to about minute 28, and that's where I start creating the painting. The last color that I'm going to be using is a Mayron body powder, and it I got it is in gold. And I want to caution you a little bit in the use of this product, and that is you don't need very much. It has a consistency, a powder consistency, very like talcum powder, so it's very light and airy. So with that lightness, even suspended in resin, it's inclined to stay close to the surface. So it will disperse out and take over your painting if you use it in too high a quantity, unless you want that. If you want a lot of, a lot of gold, then it'll create you some great effects. But just beware that it does sit on the top surface and it can become very dominant. So I'm just going to move the tray back into view. With um, a clear resin sealant that I've placed already in the piece. I did that the day before. So I'm now going to you can I don't when I when I video myself I always like kind of laugh when I see me myself do this before I paint I clearly must always do this I kind of outline in my mind the the way that the composition's going to be I don't it's not really a conscious act to be honest but that's what you saw me doing it's kind of interesting when you watch your behaviors back isn't it so the first color that I'm going to put down is the Mum's Tattoo Ink in the Doo Doo Brown, which is the deep brown of the two, second one being suede. And I'm just going to start creating some shape. Um, and in my mind, what I'm trying to take down is... How is the colors going to lead the eye? What is the flow going to be? So I've put the cup down because what's left in the cup will be in that area. So I tip my cups, very careful not to get any on the sides of the tray. And um, I just leave it there while I'm trying to kind of, kind of decide what my next step is because it means I'm going to utilize the volume of my resin. So my second color is going to be a black diamond pigment and it's medieval copper. Now I've selected that strategically because I initially put down a tattoo ink and now I'm coming behind alongside with overlap 
and I'm applying a pigment powder, so a mica powder essentially. I'm doing that very deliberately because now I have two products, solutes as, I, as they are termed, um, solutes being paint, ink, mica powder, etc. Um, very different viscosities, different weight to the product from a chemical perspective. So if you are going to create some effects, this is how you do it. You bring different types of products and you put them next to each other so that they sit against each other and there is a little bit of overlap. Um, and when you overlap your products, what happens is some will move underneath and some will move over the top. So that in and of itself can create some effects. The third product I'm putting down is I'm coming back with my ink again. And this is the Mums Millennium Tattoo Ink in Suede. So I'm running it around, um, just kind of carrying on with my composition. As you see, I to the right, I put it against the mica powder, which is what the black diamond powder uh, pigment. And I'm doing it again there because... I really want my mica powder defined within two other products. I want it to sit close to paint or ink because I know that I'm likely to get some interaction between those two products and, and create some type of effect. So that is the second of two inks and that is the Mums Millennium in the colour of suede. And note that I haven't put the red down. The reason why I haven't put the red down is it's my signature color. So I want to lay it down last because I, I'm trying to manipulate my painting to have that as a dominant color in the final piece. So I'm just putting down a little bit more of my uh, medieval copper because I have two inks there sitting next to each other. So I'm um, just breaking them apart a little bit by creating some kind of transition with another product. So the next one I'm going to use is the other black diamond uh, pigment. And that is the hazelnut, diamond hazelnut. And I'm going to run that alongside a lot of the products. I really like this color. And uh, I'm going to definitely interact it with my ink as well as alongside and overlap the mica to create some. That will create some depth. Two mica powders next to each other can actually give an illusion of depth. The other thing is if you notice where I haven't put any paint yet, I'm putting that down there too because when I do introduce the red, I want it to be defined by another product and I want interaction. So I've, I've prepped my red areas ready to take uh, the paint, um, hoping that I'm going to create some effects. So I'm getting close to the edge as I can without overspilling onto the side of the tray. If that did happen, um, one of the things you can use is like nail polish remover. Just put it on some tissue, but be careful because obviously they can shed um, fibers, but you can remove it that way. So the red is going in now and the red, these two reds are both categorized as translucent. So you can definitely see that in the middle because you can see some of the wood, um, kind of the design of the wood coming through. Now, that's very conscious on my behalf to use that because I'm running it through the painting. It's translucent, so I've run it over the top of other products and you can see them underneath. And what will happen is when I apply heat, that product underneath will change viscosity, so will the red, and that in and of itself will move them. So you will see on the final piece some of the uh, great effects, well, I call them great, depends on your perspective. Um, some of the effects that I like a great deal in my art are related to having not only two different solutes, be it ink, 
mica powder, etc., next to each other and overlapping, but also having some translucency so that you can see products underneath and 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 kind of encourage their presence by adding heat. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not going to tilt this particularly. So I'm just kind of just manipulating a little tilt there just to make sure that the resin has rolled all the way around the edge of the tray and that I do have a complete finish. So the only color I haven't put down yet is the gold. I'm putting that down last. But uh, now's the heat. And when I finish the heat, take a look. You'll see there's some effects already happening. If this was a clock face and uh, we were looking down towards 6 o'clock, you will see just above the 6 o'clock some kind of circles of goldy color. That's the mica powder coming up through the ink. And look in the middle. If this was a clock and you're looking in the middle, just bring your eye up a little bit and you'll see kind of a wave motion. That's mica powder, ink, and paint. And it's interacting. Now, what I'm putting down now is, and I always keep about a fluid ounce of clear resin aside because I am putting some clear resin where I'm trying to create some effects. And clear resin has a reflective quality. So you put it between two colors, two products essentially, and you add a clear resin layer. I found that that will encourage effects. Um, it kind of means that those two products are kind of moving against each other with a barrier between. I don't quite know how to explain it, but I do know that clear resin will uh, bring about some really beautiful effects, especially if it's combined at the point where there is resin and another, not resin, sorry, a mica powder with another product, such as paint or ink. Um, and I'm pointing at some of the effects that are happening, and that's related to the clear resin. As you can see, already I have effects, and I haven't actually really done anything other than layer the colors. Now I'm looking at the piece right now and I'm I'm looking at the middle as well and I'm going to come in with a little bit more red and just add a little bit more depth to that red in the middle. I feel it's a little bit too translucent. So I've taken a popsicle stick and I have the Mayron Gold uh, body powder in resin and I am now going to, and this is my most enjoyable part of painting I think, um, with resin is I'm I'm actually creating defined shapes within the design so I'm trying to bring back the design that I had in my mind but also work and enhance the design that's come to the surface so I'm trying to introduce what it was I was trying to achieve but I'm also trying to maximize what I've received that's just happening naturally and going back to the clock, so if that's a clock face, look at not, uh, 3 o'clock and follow the eye around to the 6 o'clock hour. Can you see all those effects happening? It, it really is quite beautiful where I'm putting the gold right now. Um, and the gold's going to accent that design a little bit. But when I come in for some close-ups, you'll see that there's um, the overlap is really maximizing there and... Um, the, you can see right through and see multiple layers. So I continue to run my design with the gold. So the only time I torch the piece is once. When I had my coverage, I, my, my piece was covered and I came in and lightly torched it. Um, and that was to, one, help remove some of the air bubbles, but also really to start activating some of the effects and enabling me to see what's going to happen with the piece. What, what can I almost guarantee is going to carry through to the final piece? So that was that initial torching change the viscosity and uh, activated the resin. But of course now the, t now the clock is ticking, so um, you know, I've only got so much work time. So 
So I'm looking at it now, and what I've decided is to mix um, a little bit more. I still have a, about, I guess, about half a fluid ounce of clear resin. So I just, just mixed a little bit more of the uh, red iron oxide gold and fluid acrylic with the quinacridone nickel azo gold. And I'm going to apply that to the center before I do my final torch, just to kind of give it just a little, I just want a little bit more rich color in the middle. And as I said, this is a 15 inch diameter um, tray. And I have in there, in there about 12 fluid ounces of resin. So I'm adding that extra little bit of red. And this tray, um, what I typically do is when I'm finished, um, I will come behind in 24 hours and I will put just a fine layer of clear resin on top. It just, I just want it to have lasting, um, you know, appeal and not be damaged in any way. Not that you need to put a clear resin on top. I just choose to um, seal it in and just kind of make sure that I have that, that finish. But it, it's not required. There's no need to do that. So I have some more of the black diamond pigment in the diamond hazelnut. And I have some more gold and a little bit of the uh, copper left. So I'm, I'm carrying on defining my design. So I've just, um, I noticed that that red in the middle was breaking apart into what its own components. So I, and I was actually enjoying that look. So I decided to uh, outline them and create some, some movement there and some shape. So that's what I did. I put some of the black diamond pigment down in the diamond hazelnut and I've come behind with some gold. And with the gold, I'm not using a great deal. It gives you a lot of impact for very little product. And, you know, just noticing as I'm watching this video, because I do my voiceover afterwards because I'm wearing a mask, so you wouldn't really be able to hear me. But if you look at this as a clock face and you look at uh, 3 o'clock, look at those uh, transitions that are happening there. And they're running right through to the 6, 7, 8 o'clock hour. And they're repeated again at top of the hour. Um, really beautiful. And that's what you get from overlapping translucent paint with another product. So this one is tattooing. And then overlapping those products underneath them and above them with mica powders that are metallic. And uh, so, you know, you can recreate this. You can certainly do it in different color schemes. But if you want to create some of the effects, you have to go beyond just using, say, paint or just using ink. You need to mix it up a little bit to get those kind of interactions. So I'm really pleased with this piece. Um, I, I was almost jumping for joy in my studio when I was watching this as it was unfolding. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's some close-ups. So I want to give you some idea of, look at the mica powder underneath and the red sitting on top. Really beautiful. Um, I get a little bit passionate. I love art and I love colors. Um, but you can see lots of transition, lots of effects happening here. Look at that red, absolutely beautiful. And if you want to revisit that red, I really do encourage you to check out my video, uh, The Making of Passion, uh, same palette of colors. Um, and you can, you know, see the beauty in the piece and it's now cured and it just is, I, I just think it's sensational. It really is beautiful. And this is, you know, a reasonably easy uh, project, I would say, for as long as you have the materials and um, to maybe make as a gift. So, and this is the 
first of, I hope that I want to do a series of videos. Look at the transition. I mean, the colors are just pinging out at me, but um, I'm hoping to do a series of videos that are around like the 25th of the month and, and take products that you can maybe purchase such as this tray and turn them into unique pieces of art um, so that maybe you can feel inspired to dabble in for your own home or and pleasure or maybe to gift. So please subscribe to my channel um, and because that enables me to appear in search results etc. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Bye. Bye everybody.